Gentlemen Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about The Good Father, the Martin McNeil story. The Good Father stars Charisma Carpenter, Anna Wynne O'Dreskel, and Tom Everett Scott. Now, on the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Pour it up! Now if, you haven't seen, now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and press pause and come on back. So I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. Martin McNeil appears to have it all. A beautiful wife and children, and he is a pillar of his community as a medical professor. His wife, Michelle, doesn't think everything is so perfect. Listen, he's never here anymore, and he's always going to the gym. Well, you know, Dad, he always likes to look good. <sighs> I know I shouldn't talk to you about this, but I don't feel like I have anywhere else to go. I think your dad's having an affair. With her daughter Alexis by her side and accuses her husband of cheating on her, Alexis is maybe a little too involved with her parents' affairs. The mother and daughter find phone records leading to a woman named Julian Willett. Martin explains that the woman is a tenant in a rental property and reveals that he but cancer. It is enough to appease Michelle, but she still gets a facelift to keep looking young so Martin won't cheat on her. Martin and his medical student daughter Alexis take care of Michelle as she recovers. Martin is quick to dole out the pain pill. Alexis is reluctant to leave her mother but has to go back to school. She is barely gone for a few hours before getting a call that Michelle is dead. Alexis comes back home to help take care of her kid's sisters. Alexis notices that her father is becoming increasingly paranoid and anxious to get her out of the house. Martin is insistent on hiring a nanny and conveniently runs into an old patient who happens to be a nanny. Martin hires her on the spot and moves her into the home. The woman's name is Gypsy and she has little interest in taking care of the children. Then, Aunt Linda, Michelle's sister, shows up to warn Alexis that Martin is a liar. She looks into the foot cancer thing and finds out that Martin was faking. Aunt Linda also shows Alexis some documents about Martin's criminal history. He was arrested for fraud and tax evasion. Alexis tries to stay in the family for the sake of her sisters, but is sexually assaulted on a trip to Disney World. She tries to get a social worker to remove the children from the home, but without filing a police report, there isn't much that the social worker can do. Alexis and Aunt Linda go to the police who aren't helpful either. No one will believe Martin is capable of the things they are accusing of him because he is so notable in the community. Martin and Gypsy are over the kids and try to send them back to their home country. They are adopted and that's problematic. It ends up being a fake passport that takes Martin and Gypsy down. They are both arrested. Police decide to reopen Michelle's case and then Nancy Grace gets involved. Martin is found guilty of first degree murder and Alexis is rewarded full custody of her sister. And that is The Good Father, the Martin McNeil story. So I feel like I've been pouring it up for a lot of movies lately, but Lifetime has really been hitting it out of the park lately. This is one of Lifetime's ripped from the headline movies produced by Nancy Grace. We all know Nancy. It just goes to show when you have a compelling story that's like very shockingly horrible murder and what good production with good actors, you really can come together and make something that is worth watching. I'm not sure as to the family's involvement in this, were they approving of this depiction of their family? Maybe, probably not. But it was a good story and I think an important story to tell. This movie left me with so many questions. I really just can't believe that it's actually true. Like the husband, doctor husband, med school daughter, taking care of their mother who's recently had plastic surgery, like this should not have happened. She should not have been murdered in a bathtub like this. And the fact that he had someone on the side and they were the nanny, I mean, you couldn't write a crazier Lifetime movie if you tried. And the fact that this is 
based on a true story is just shocking. Charisma Carpenter, always great. I gotta mention her here because she doesn't really do Lifetime movies that often. So it was nice to see her here. I was so sad she was killed so early in the movie, but she really made the most of her screen time. Felt sorry for Michelle. You understood why she was kind of taking care of all these cosmetic things because she wanted to keep up with the Joneses and stay young and beautiful for her husband. It's just such a tragic way to go recovering from surgery and someone taking advantage of you like Martin McNeil did. Anna Wynne O'Dreskel played Alexis, the daughter, and I thought that she was very well cast, very, very good at kind of showing that she wanted to take care of her sisters while also wanting to respect her father until he of course crossed the line and things got creepy and we didn't like that at all. But she handled her business. She like got the lawyer, she lawyered up, she did what she needed to do. And that is a woman persevering and that's what we like to see on Lifetime. That's why we watch Lifetime. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. So the movie didn't have a lot of representation to even talk about, which is not surprising. Again, these based on true stories or ripped from the headlines. If you're portraying a true life story and that's who the people are based on, then I suppose that's who you would cast in the story. So I can't really ding the movie for that. And I think that wraps it up for this episode. If you want more Lifetime in Court, you can check out our website, lifetimeuncourt.com, or, and also follow us at Lifetime in Court. You can follow me at Patrick Miguel. And hey, the podcast is back. Check out Lifetime in Court uh, wherever you get your podcasts. We're teaming up with Deck the Hallmark to cover Christmas movies this year. So if you want some Christmas recaps, that is where you will find them. We will stick to the murdery Lifetime movies here. And yeah, tell your friends, subscribe to this channel, donate to our Kofi page, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.